Frost go. Boom. Nailed it. Spawning the bottom right hand corner of a Frost. The blue Zerg player from Team Quantic. Let's hear it for Hyun. And up at the top right hand corner, the red Protoss player. It's Liquid Hero. If uh, if StarCraft players are like Tinkerbell, then I think Hero's gonna be stronger here. What? <laughs> You're gonna have to help me out there, man. Because Tinkerbell is stronger the more you believe. Okay. Tinkerbell's a fairy. From Peter Pan? Yeah. Yeah. Dressed in green? Yeah. Th does that matter? And if you don't believe in her, she dies. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's terrible. <laughs> 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 and this was made for little children? Yeah, man. Wow. This is, uh, back in the day, kids had it rough. Their stories were, were heartbreaking and terrifying. We can see Hero on the right top side of the map, opening up Nexus first, no scout. My man. He's not going to be too happy with the fact that Ian is going to send his Overlord in the right direction. Uh, so he's definitely going to drop the Forge immediately. He wants to make sure that he is going to be safe. Fortunately for him, Ian didn't do anything crazy. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ian is doing Ian style crazy. He's going to go double hatchery. Most likely even extract it before spawning pool. And then he's going to put himself in a pretty good economic position. Now, this is surprisingly susceptible to the same kind of cannon antics that Hero hinted at in game number one. The Nexus going down before the Forge means it would be a little bit less likely to be successful. Uh, do you but think that Hero's been so delayed. Do you think Hero opened like that on Whirlwind because he uh, used the opening so many times? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, uh, you've already pointed out how, how one of the key components for these players' preparation is just watching the VODs. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Hero was even at the tournament, and most of the time, the moment you're out, what you do is just yeah. you're going to sit around a little bit, yeah. and you will watch the other games. Certainly, if he knows that he'll be playing against this guy in, in, the, in the coming yeah. weeks, there's that pylon that's going to go down. And Hun, uh, Hyun will once more be forced to pull a couple of drones. Yeah, I, I don't think he's going to... He's going to send one drone, but he can already start producing links. I think that Hero just most likely wants to produce a couple of links. I don't think that Hero is really going to commit to this. I think he might even cancel it. And well, he's not going to cancel it. He's going to send the second pro. He tried to trick. Wow, Hero, so sneaky. But now there's already going to be creep. Yeah, it's going to be a tough sell here. <laughs> it's going to be hard to cannon. You can't cannon up the high ground anymore? Nope. Yeah. If only. You can, you, can can you can cannon down, though. Wiedemans would have put that pylon on the high ground. <laughs> he would have been so ahead of that. And then actually, like the minerals kind of protect the pylon already a little bit from being surrounded. That would have been very smart. Yeah. Cybernetics score already more than halfway down, so Hero didn't really overly commit to this. Big game for Hero Ben, he could make it once more to the round of eight. He would be the first Liquid player to make it to the round of eight. Uh, Astasia was not able to make it, and I believe that he's then also go going to be the only Liquid player, because I don't think in the remaining days we have other Liquids, correct? I don't Snoop think so. Snoop didn't make it this season, no. and... Well, of course is not in contention. Nope. Nor is Dario Wunsch. Of course, always playing in WCS Europe, so... Hero, the last man standing. But often he feels confident in that situation. The Double last liquid. Mm -hmm. Double extractors going down at the six minute mark for Eon. So Eon played it very economic. Didn't even open up with speed links. And he's going to face a Stargate opening. This is good news for Eon, Ben. I think the moment he sees this, he's definitely going to make quite a few drones. Uh, he just wants to make sure there are no hidden pylons up on the map. But Eon wouldn't be Eon if he's so active with the links. I actually think he's one of the Zergs that's just most active mm -hmm. in the early stages of the game. Phenomenal early game scouting here for Hyun. Hero, what are you up to? This is an incredibly fast pylon at the third base. Might we see a seven-minute Nexus? Yeah, they better bit take a note out of Maxed's playbook. It yeah. was excellent in Maxed's game against Scarlet. We'll see if it works out for Hero here on Frost. With the most bizarre push. You know, I've been thinking more and more about the push, and the longer I think about it, Ben, the less sense it makes to me. I still, <laughs> I still don't get how Max had made it work. I was talking to Scarlett about it, and she was just as confused as you are. <laughs> I don't understand that push. It makes no sense. <laughs> There's so many things that I could have done that would have made it so bad. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, Overlord is kind of this great over here though for Eon, as Eon is going to see this target, he's going to see the Phoenix as well. He's already seen this Nexus too, and Ben, if there's ever been a scenario where he could just throw crazy amount of uh, speed links and roaches towards this, uh, it would be now. This is something we saw live do on Frost against Hero, and I think if Eon is going to do the same, Hero is going to have such a hard time keeping this base alive. I agree with you, Kev. The speed yeah. is maybe a little too slow though. It's yeah, th th it's a little late, but if you make, like, there's two types of Zerglings attacks you can make. You can make a few, then you can make a lot, but you can also make a ridiculous amount of links that even like a good wall of and a couple of Zealots in a good position are not going to be enough anymore. And that's something we saw live do, not just against uh, Hero, but also against Naniwa. And Hero already starting with a little bit of SimCity. Very well protected. Yeah, pilot. he's got a great wall in there. It's going to be hard to get to that cannon. Definitely will require some roaches. Already, Hyun is getting the hydrogen cap. I don't think he's going to throw roachling at this. Now he doesn't have to, because if you take a look at the work account, it's 71 drones against 49 probes. And this is like often a kind of a rough scenario when you're Protoss. Even when you take that third nexus super quick, you're afraid of so many things. But the thing that you might have to be most afraid of is a Zerg who just drones up like a madman and is still going to be ahead of you economically. Spire going down as well. Now that's interesting. Yeah. And double Stargate going down. And that is pretty good against Spire. Any kind of Spire. Yep. <laughs> the Mr. Beta Muda threat. Whenever they go Muda, somehow eight Phoenixes are waiting for it. Never fails. Poor Ben. Ben never gets lucky when he tries to go for the secret Muda transition. Uh, but it might just be like he young keeps it there in case of an option. He might sacrifice an Overlord in the near future. And I think if he sees the amount of Stargates, plus one even being researched air weapons, I don't think he's ever going to commit to this. 103 supply for Hyun against 82 supply for Hero. The longer that Hyun waits, the better it gets for Hero. I kind of no. wonder, Kev, whatever happened to the, the whole just maxing out and throwing endless waves of units at your opponent's styles that, that uh, Stefano popularized? Uh, we just don't see that kind of play anymore. Charge void rates are very good, and SimCity, you know, people have been getting better against it, and of course, Photon Overcharge. I mean, mostly when Stefano did that kind of stuff, it was Wings yeah, of Liberty. It was, certainly. Mothership Core changes a ton. Uh, but I think if uh, if Eon just makes a ridiculous amount of Hydras and attacks before either Storm or let's say the Colossus count is up to four, which I really think right now is a very realistic option. Uh, look at the work account, 78 oh against 64. God, this is so painful, uh, five meters on the way. Poor Eon, he, he really wants to make a good meter transition today, but this is not the moment. Now, if he, so if he hides this until there's like 20, it might actually still be okay. Oh, there's not a single Phoenix on the map? Yeah. I thought we had a couple. No, well, no. Hero now knows. He's producing Phoenix. How does Hero know? I don't know, but he knows. What the hell? How does he know? I mean, he saw the Spire. I guess maybe he's just like, hmm, I should prepare for Mudas because I haven't really seen any units. I mean, it's not like the Phoenixes are ever really bad. We saw how effective they were uh, uh, on, our, on our last game. Uh, and now Hero is sad, and now he just got even more sad. <laughs> and now he got super sad the moment <laughs> he saw those <laughs> Phoenixes pop out. I guess we'll probably see him sacrifice these mutas. We're yeah. not going to be able to get a whole lot done. There's really nothing else he can possibly do with them. He's going to make a lot of Hydras. We see more and more Hydras in production. 2-2 upgrades are on the way as well. I still believe that Hyun is going to have some sort of a Hydra timing. Robo Bay is going down now. It, I mean, he's going to have to be really careful. We've seen players like Alicia and Crank in the past being so amazing with Void Rays and, uh, and Force Fields. And even Naniwa very recently. That was ridiculous what kind of stuff that Nani did. Uh, but still, if you have just an overwhelming amount of Hydras, you can definitely make it work. It's possible. It's definitely possible. Uh, this is not the right amount, though. He needs a little more than this. Photon overcharge being cast. He picks up the cannon. That's something. And forces yeah, out an early photon overcharge. Photon overcharge is nice, too. He can, he can always back up, max out, and uh, continue the aggression. Looks like he wants to fight, though. Uh, Lings will surround these zealots. These gateway units are going to melt away, but the numbers aren't there right now, Hyun. And... Uh, Phoenix is proving their worth. Sweep in, lift up several of the Hydras. And These four Mutalisks have been surprisingly effective, though. <laughs> I don't know how many probes they've killed. Though. They've killed eight. Yeah, this is pretty good. More Nothing than, wrong uh, with more that. More than we thought they'd get, at least. Well, that was a pretty expensive attack for you. I, I really ag agreed, and I really thought that this, an attack like this is good, but I still think he should have waited a little longer. If we look at it right now, 12 more Hydras on the way, 2-2 two, two upgrades are on the way. I would have loved to see him here just maxed out with 2-2 two, two Hydras. Sure, there might have been a Colossus. There might have been two Colossus, but... Uh, you know, going with a small amount is never going to cut it. And these Void Rays are just so good. <laughs> and the Phoenixes... Yeah. Phoenixes are so amazing yeah, against Hydras. they help out. One Phoenix falls, but all the Hydras are going to die. Uh. And uh, Hyun's position goes from bad to worse. The Mutas still doing damage. Yep. 
Up to 10 kills. I think this is where the last probes they will ever kill yeah. though. Picked up a Phoenix as well. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sick. Uh, but still, things are starting to look really dicey now because the window that Eon perhaps had before, it's always hard to say if there really was a window, but the opportunity that was there, that's never going to be there anymore. By the next time that he's able to make a Hydra attack, there will be Colossus and there is a realistic chance that there will even be Storm out. And then we have kind of a whirlwind scenario then uh, again. How is Eon going to fight Colossus and Storm when he's just not ridiculously super rich and has Hero on a contain? Yeah. Yes, uh, Infestors now, that's a cool choice. Infestor Hydra is obviously going to be great against Phoenixes, can also catch the uh, the Void Rays. Eon could really use a break where Hero just like kind of move commands his uh, Phoenixes. Uh, he has to be careful with the Infestors, the Infestors might spawn one by one and the uh, Phoenixes might be able to catch him. I mean, those Phoenixes are playing a dangerous game. If uh, if an Infestor spawns under the Phoenixes and lands yeah, a that would be so that's sick. just going to be a, a t and that's exactly what Hyun is <laughs> hoping for. You can see him so uh, clicking so furiously. He's like, oh, 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 Infestor. It might actually happen. Phoenixes are going to have to dance out this way. Yeah, and that means here the come the Infestors. Are be out. Fungal will be cast. Certainly. Uh. Possibly. <laughs> Gets one Phoenix. Got one. <laughs> Four to go. And at the same time, Hero is getting so much time though. Oh, these Phoenixes are so super trapped. They will all fall eventually. Not a very exciting way of them dying. I thought this would be a little more amazing, but in the end they will all fall. At the same time, Hero is attacking this potential fifth base for Yondo. But of all of all, Ben, Hero has bought so much time for himself. That was an expensive loss, no doubt, because those Phoenixes, they help out so much in cleaning up the Zerg army, and it forces Eon that once he starts a fight, he can never really retreat because he's going to lose a lot of units. So, definitely a good pickup, but he needs more than just that. These Zealots will pick off this expansion in the bottom left-hand corner of the map. There were no drones there. I don't think Hyun mines too much uh, as uh, the, uh, the cost of those Zealots and that pylon outweighs the mm. cost of that hatchery that he really wasn't even using. Kind of the entire army is out of position as well. We have 11 Corruptors on the way. Now, that's interesting. You know, I think it's still possible that Hyun's able to take a great fight, Kev. Mm -hmm. The army of Hero is not that scary right now. Uh, it, it is scary, but it's still the uh, kind of army that you can definitely kill. If he's able to snipe the Mothership core and then get a fight with Hydras and Corruptors, I believe in it. But if he waits much longer and there's going to be Storm as well, then we have a different ballgame. And uh, Hero's being pretty smart about this, not forcing any kind of bad That's fights. Zealots by themselves in the natural. He's going to catch some of these units in transit. First storm is mostly uh, if the Mothership the Core falls, oh, though. Fungal. Mothership Here come core. the Corruptors. Oh, man. So close. The uh, single Colossus gets left behind. Oh, my. And these Zealots have dealt, have dealt yeah. so much damage. Came with a heavy cost. Every drone in that expansion. Uh, and this point, in this point of the game, Hion also knows what he has to. I mean, Hero also knows what he has to do. It's like, oh, you have infestors and corrupted. Well, you just lost a lot of drones. From this point on, I'm gonna make sure that the next fight, I will have way more than enough colossus, and I'm gonna have so many void rays that your corruptors are going to melt in no time. Hero is not gonna tag anymore until he has 200 supply and very, very good upgrades. Yeah. And you know, he's still being very active with these zealots. I love how he's denying bases, though. That makes his life so much easier. Hero's just playing a fantastic game. It kind of makes it look easy. Yeah, when does. I look at this, I can't imagine how I lose every single game against Zerg, but <laughs> somehow I do. <laughs> Unless I use the Roddy build. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I kind of feel that if, if Hyun takes a fight, forces a good fight right, like right this second. Yeah, but there's Storm as well, Ben. There are five high Templars with Storm. Yeah, and you can't really do anything about them underneath the Void Rays and the Colossi. Uh, I think without a lot of static defenses or maybe later like a very well upgraded Ultralisk army like if Hero is going to be able to get this base as well and it's going to be so easy for him to keep these bases alive with all the gateways that he has and the Dark Shrine is about to finish up as well uh, it's safe to say that Hyun is going to need some uh, miraculous fungals and you know, some uh, an excellent focus fire on the Voyagers with the Corruptors, with the Hydras. This is going to be such a tough fight for Yon, because one small mistake and his army is oh, absolutely Hydra's going to in melt. A very awkward spot. Heroes attacking in multiple positions. Uh, War Prism and Zealots in the natural. Yon's <laughs> army is just push all over Yon's the place. Uh, here come the Corruptors, though. That could be a winnable fight for these Corruptors. They don't want to jump into it just yet, though. Those Corruptors do uh, have... A lot of Dark Templars in the main base as well. They're going to be able to deal so much damage. There is nothing over here on here that can deal with these Zealots and Dark Templars. He's going to lose his upgrades, Ben. Uh, 
Hero just outplaying Hyun at every turn. If if somehow Hyun could reset these uh, like these the Stargate unit count, maybe he could do a crazy Muta switch. He's got enough gas for about 20 Mutas. But even that doesn't. I feel think like that's it something that he still has in mind. But to do that, he needs at least a reasonable fight. He can lose the fight, but he needs a reasonable fight. He's uh, making a few roaches. That's never a good sign. I guess it's just to deal with these zealots. Um, Hero's getting a little adventurous over yeah, here, though. He's getting overextended. A fungal is cast. It's going to land on the phoenixes, so they will all go down. The void rays also get hit with that fungal. Uh, but, uh, oh, and another good fungal is cast. Here come the Corruptors. They're going to jump out of the charge range. Also, charge activated, so the Corruptors are backing off. The moment they start fighting when there's no more charge, it might be a better fight for uh, them. Corruptor count might be good enough. Another good fungal is going to go down. Hero perhaps overstaying his welcome a little bit. Every Void Ray will fall. Finally, the recall oh, was casted. I would have loved to see him pick off the Mothership Core with one volley. That would have changed a lot. Oh, but the Spire died, so no Muta Switch. And uh, just in case there was going to be a Muta switch, we've got Anion Pulse Crystals being researched, so... Man, tough spot here for Hyun, to say mm -hmm. the least. He's going to try to reload with 11 Infestors. I don't know what that's wow. really going to do Hero actually was able to take out this entire base as well. How many workers has Hero killed throughout the entire game? 39, that's just... Uh, that's, that's Pretty brutal, man. Hero yeah. looks just out outright better than Hyun this series. Wow, and the Roach Warren goes down as well. It's just not... Yeah, he makes it look so easy as well. It feels like he's so safe in any phase of the game. I just think the biggest problem for Zerk is you cannot take a bad fight against Void Rays and Colossus. That's just the way it is. And that first Hydra attack, I think if he unweights uh, roughly 90 seconds, he's going to... Uh. Oh, Storm drops as well on this mineral line. Uh, Hero's just showing off at this point. Hyun has uh, 40 drones out of the map. He's going to try to remake his Spire. But man, he just can't seem to get any kind of momentum. He's having to retake bases. He's having to reestablish his drone count. Now it's a Tempest switch for Hero, mm -hmm. making Tempest three at a time. That might not be the best choice. Yeah, I agree. I don't think this is a, he really needs Tempest in this situation. Revelation being casted on these Corruptors. A lot of these Corruptors are so low on HP as well, and there is no Queen count to really uh, get them up. There's actually not a single Queen on the map right now. That's always bad news if you're a Zerg player. The Corruptor count is, is scary, and the army of Hero is not that great against it. I mean, Storm is always uh, something you got to be mindful of. Mm. I still think Hyun wants to make a ton of mutas. He's just not going to get that chance. He's making 13 runs now. Protoss air weapons plus 3 being researched. It's been a while since I saw that beautiful symbol. <laughs> and I didn't even know what that looked like. <laughs> I know it took very long. I once researched it in an FFA. <laughs> Ten minutes later, it was ready. 220 seconds for plus three air weapons. But back then, I was not able to chrono boost, man. <laughs> Six additional gates going down for a hero. A hero is just kind of trying to spend his money in every possible way. Uh, he's just had such a comfortable time. Archons are also a very scary thing uh, when you have this amount of Corruptors. Two or three juicy shots on Corruptors that are clumped up, and it could change everything. Uh, this is a this is a frustrating style to play against as a Zerg player. One bad fight and you're fighting an almost uh, unwinnable battle. It's definitely possible. There's always a way back in it, but when you're playing against Hero, he's not making it easy. Oh. More storm drops and a huge zealot warp, and that's nine zealots warped in at once. And uh, I don't think the army of Yun can get there in time to save this hatchery. You know, because Hyun has lost so many drones throughout the entire game, he will be able to create a slightly bigger army than Hero, but... Uh, he's also getting the greatest fire. Perhaps it's just for attack upgrades, because I hope it's not for... Uh and Broodlords aren't going to do well against these Tempests. Nope. Oh, Revelation being casted on all these uh, Infested. Let's be so careful with it. Man, look at that Archon. It just doesn't die. Plus two shields, pretty good for Archons. Yeah. <laughs> Hero has the entire top half of the map, a terrifying Protoss army. Uh, now, it's, it has to be said that, that crazier things have happened when you have this many full energy infestors. Mm -hmm. uh, they are an amazing comeback unit, but it will be so hard because of feedback, because of Tempest, because mm -hmm. of the fact that Void Rays and Colossi do so much damage. Oh, this hatchery is so low on HP, and there is a Dark Templar here, and the Dark Templar will be able to pick up this hatchery as well. Eon is going to be very poor from this point. And there's still that Warp Prism active. <laughs> and you know, the biggest problem Neural as well, Parasite Ben. Neural Parasite being researched. We haven't seen this in a long <laughs> time, so... Uh, Neural Parasite, the Great Equalizer. Well, there's almost enough Infestors on the map to account for every unit in the Army of Hero. No feedbacks! No! No feedbacks. Storms did do a lot of damage. But you know the thing is, Ben? 
Even if Jan somehow wins the fight, which is going to be extremely difficult, he's going to have to control his units so well, he's going to have to land excellent fungals, even if he oh. wins the fight. By the time he makes it across the map, there are uh, 25 gateway units waiting for him. Well, here we go. Hyun's going to take a crazy fight. Neural Parasite's not done yet. He's going to be relying on Fungal Ooh. and, I guess, Infested Terrans. Corruptor's doing pretty good damage to these... Oh, uh, feedback. And that's how 15 Infestors becomes 4 very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Big and Zealot wipe uh, in as well. There was a Dark Templar in the mix. The Corruptors did reasonably well against the Void Rays, but there are so many Gateway units still alive, and even a couple of these Tempests do manage to survive. Hero has looked fantastic in this series. That's it!